Good morning. You're uh, muted. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. So we are recording. Um, why don't you turn on the, um, the translation feature? Mm, okay. Or like, so let's capture the word, the verbiage. So then it'll be easier for us to how do you, talk what we're going to How do you do the translation? Well, let's see. So besides chat, Sarah's, so you've got the record. Yeah, but is it down on um, um, audio or? Yeah, well, where is it? I'm just, I've never seen it. I've never done it. Uh, test speaker, switch to audio. Uh, nope. so we... Audio. No, so it's not. So it should be like um, basically, you know, when you get the real time. Uh, How about apps? No, no collaboration. Can't see what's in there. Never seen Loading that. apps. No, yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. no uh, features. Oh, well, maybe we just need to take notes. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm going to try to turn that off and get. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we get. Well, how are you? Well, I'm fine. I um, I actually, I, I, you saw my note, right? Yes, I did. I'll talk. Yeah. The, the fact that I actually got to go surfing this week was uh, really uh, an up. Uh, I've been telling myself that <clears throat> I can eventually find a way out to the beach. I have one friend who I said to him at a birthday party about a month ago that he's the only guy in the world that if he called and said, we're going surfing. I would uh, not be able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> but where did you go? Bolinas. Um, oh, okay. Bolinas isn't a big wave surfing place. It's just no. an easy place to drive to. Nice drive, nice place. And he goes with his boogie board uh, quite a bit. So um, I said, sure. All right, I'll go. And of course, then I realized at that moment that I had scheduled a meeting with uh, Lynn Peralta. Uh, that, that Okay, yeah. And so I, I, I sent her a note saying, okay, there's only one thing that'll keep me from meeting with you, and that's this. And she understood. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good way to establish uh, priorities with somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now, I, so do I, you do a wetsuit or? Uh, yes, yes, I have. Yeah, a, yeah, all of that Northern a, California stuff. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now, I, my little box that shows you just diminished down to almost nothing. So you have to just a minute and see if uh, I can get it back up to regular, like full screen. There it is. Full screen. There it is. Now we're back. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was a test because I've been carrying around my wetsuit and my boogie board and my um bolt for the last year you know thinking oh i'm just i'll be ready anytime i have a full day or a half day or some portion of a day that you know and i especially if i hear that there's some waves out there um but jerry is my or uh, steve zivilich who's a who actually went to high school with me and uh and we tell each other we surf together but i think it was after we graduated every time we went down for a reunion we'd meet in the parking lot at ocean beach uh and <laughs> at his 75th birthday he showed pictures of us at our um 40th i think uh anniversary in the parking lot uh in wetsuits with boards and the only thing i remember about that day was it was so hard for me to get out of my wetsuit that it took him and i like at least a half an hour to pull it off oh man <laughs> <laughs> which was not it was not the memory to keep in your brain about oh my god i'm getting so fat i can't get out of my wetsuit mm -hmm. But uh, fortunately, between then and now, I switched wetsuits to one that's a whole lot thinner and more pliable, and I still put it on backwards and inside out all the time. But, okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's like, because you have to get in through a window that's like the neck size, you know, and mm -hmm. get down and getting this down and pulling it out. And it's like, oh, this time going out, I, I got it almost on and... I was leaving early in the morning, so I woke Pat up and said, okay, I need help getting the last little thing, you know, and she was going, how do you do this, you know, and, I was like, <laughs> and 
then I and I and then I drove all the way down there and back in the wetsuit because I wasn't about to try to get in and out of it other than in the confines of my home here. Right. Yeah. yeah well. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, you, but I, the I materials guess. have improved a little yeah. bit. You well, say they, it's thinner. Yeah. They're they're thin. You know, the kind of wetsuits that we used to have when I was a you know not a kid because we didn't have wetsuits when I was a kid, but the kind that started into the fad of having a wetsuit when you surf were the scuba diving wetsuits, which were really right. thick, you know. Mm-hmm. So, and, and you needed it when you were up here in Northern California because the wet, you know, water is really mm-hmm. cold. Right. So I, so the first one I bought was one up here, thick, you know, seven meters or whatever. Uh, and most of the kids down in Southern California who were just wearing sort of half suits and stuff were wearing the newest stuff, which is only like three ply, you know. So mm-hmm. I figured... And and much easier to to bend and twist and get into, so that's what I after buying this five hundred dollar seven inch ply and mm-hmm. using it like twice, uh, I finally said, um, okay, I'm gonna uh, I will give that to a friend of mine who actually is helping kids who are disabled get into the water. Uh, so I felt really good about it. okay, mm-hmm. that's a good it's a good to. use, yeah, right, right. And then I went down to San Rafael to this uh, place just uh, east in East San Rafael. It's a pretty good surf shop. And I said, OK, all right, I'm, I give up. I want something that, you know, will work for the fat me because uh, they they have a large selection and they helped me get uh, buy the right one, learn how to get into it, at least in the shop down there. I still I swear I've got to put it on two or three times up here and just put it on, take it off and put it on, take it off, just so I can get used to knowing how to do it and know what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Yeah. But I'm I'm dedicated now to not needing Steve to call me to actually have a, a day or two between now and August 17th or 12th or whenever we're leaving again um, to go out to Bolinas and do it all by myself. Um, mm-hmm. So now, all by yourself, you got to be careful about that. You know, well, that's it. As I left just before I left, uh-huh. she said, just don't die. Okay. You know, like, well, if it's just you, she can go with you and she can sit on the beach and read or whatever. If yeah, she doesn't want to do that, <laughs> that's my dream, not hers. You know, <laughs> my dream is we go to Hawaii somewhere, we go uh-huh. to California, and she sits on the beach and, you know, like watches me. And I'm going, now, do I really want her to watch me? It, it, I, I'm embarrassed enough to to be so poorly surfing in the first place. It's kind of nice to know that nobody in Bolinas ever knew knew what I used to be, and I don't have guilt. <laughs> you know, we were out there. Steve and I are 75, right? And we're out there, and we're the only people in the water over 40, and mm-hmm. most of the people who are in the water are under 20. You know, yeah, and, and so we're and that, no. See, my my aunt's cousin Steve has sur- surfed his whole life. Uh-huh. He grew up in the desert, but he was in he was at Dana Point, and then he moved to Dana Point. He was a social worker. He, re- yeah, re- he yeah. retired to this day. Like he's seventy six. He he yeah. surfs almost every day. It's pretty yeah, amazing. It's, <laughs> and that's the kind of person I would have been had forty five years ago. If you stayed in Oceanside or Dana Point, said, yeah. yeah. If I'd said okay. See, there was a point when I came out of the service in 1971, 70, actually. Uh, and I had this, I was at um, McClellan Air Force Base, Travis, right? And that's where they, everybody comes back from Vietnam, lands in Travis. And I had this, should I go to Southern California and become the mm-hmm. certain bum that I've always been? Or should I stay up here and try to reinvent myself? Well, I wanted to go to Berkeley. I was, I had, you know, gotten a few units while I was in the service and, they said, well, go to Berkeley. And so I went over to Berkeley and they said, no, 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 you're halfway between a nothing and a freshman. So go over across the bay to College of Marin and get a couple of, you know, get your AA degree and then come right. mm-hmm. here. So I thought, okay, this is a plan. I've actually got a plan. It's not like I'm just hanging around Northern California. I'm going to go to school. And mm-hmm. so I stayed up here. And had I not done that, I would have been your friend. I would have been down in Southern California. Ed La Jolla, San Diego. Right. Yeah. Um, and I would have uh, yeah. you know, surfed all my life, I'm sure. And and never amounted to anything other than just that old guy who surfs. 
Oh, you would have taken over San Diego County. But... <laughs> San Diego County was an interesting place. They were very forward thinking in a lot of th ways, you know, like literally the opposite of Sonoma mm -hmm. is like, so especially on domestic violence, they were five years ahead of everybody else. Mm -hmm. The DA in, in, in San Diego, that all got imported to Riverside and LA and every place else. But well, the family justice center concept yeah that's yeah. totally san diego and yeah. you know the you know sonoma was the 27th family justice center and they oh we're wonderful blah, blah. <laughs> no yeah. you're not <laughs> you'll you'll appreciate the fact that we up in sonoma were frightened at one point of about 10 guys who showed up guys and girls who showed up from san diego in about 1978 or 79 uh and were the new guys in the town, you know, who had sort of taken, they took over Dak, a guy named um, uh, Eisen, Don Eisen. Uh, SAY came up from uh, San Diego. There's a bunch of people who are like, who are they? Georgia Berlin. Mm -hmm. There's just okay. people who are like the San Diegans who came up here. And <laughs> I remember I going, didn't know Georgia came from San Diego. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she, she knew all those folks and they were just sort of hanging around. I, it was interesting because they all blended and we all had a good time. Um, but I, I was going, hey, who am I? Am I the San Diegans like them who just came up 20 years earlier? Or, you know, is it like, mm -hmm. you know, so anyway. OK, so let me get to some of the things that we I, I sent you a note on because I wanted to try to bring you up. Yeah, so let's talk open. about Lynn and, and the and the ARPA stuff. Yeah, um, well, here, I, and, and then we'll talk about COC stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's actually, and one other, there's three things that relate to ARPA. Um, and uh, the third one I'll tell you about because it's not in the letter. Uh, you know, this meeting with Lynn is perfectly uh, fortunate because I was trying to sort of find out who was going to take Oscar's place before uh, they actually announced it. And everybody was pointing to Kelly Noah uh, or Noe, I guess who has been on the staff for quite a while and everybody likes her and everything. And, and Oscar thought she was going to get it. Uh, and so did um, a couple of other people who kept saying, now don't tell anybody, but Kelly's going to be the new Oscar. So I was sort of half trying to figure out, you know, who is this Kelly and, you know, who do I know who knows, knows her and how can I start getting her attuned to the things you and I eventually mm -hmm. report about. Um but she was she was being very shy and very not very you know like adventurous, uh, and then I was at a um, uh, over at Sebastopol at the ceremony for the hundred. Uh, um, uh, you're, you're cutting it. You're cutting in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Well, the hundred. You're cutting in and out just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to turn off my uh, video and see if it does any better. Okay. Okay, so um, I was over at the ceremony in Sebastopol at Mount Pleasant Cemetery uh, for the 100 indigent that um, Lynn Hopkins had put on, and Angela Struckman was there. Um, and so, because it's human services, I think, who's been following or who had led, at least stimulated this, let's have a, a annual cer uh, ceremony for those who we bury uh, at county expense. And so I said, um, have you selected anybody yet? And she said, oh, well, good you ask. We did select somebody and here's her name and I'll get her in touch with you. And I said, because I explained what we were doing, studying ARPA and trying to figure out what, how we could help get everybody to spend the money for ARPA. And I also told her about the uh, uh, this sort of directory of services because she's a good example. She was on the COC for a while. She figured out that it was sort of somewhat chaotic and, and full of a whole lot of newcomers who didn't know what was going on. So when I said we were trying to come up with uh, a, both a description of the housing compendium, um, you know, what is an interim, what is a shelter, what, you know, how does it change from permanent to, I mean, from interim to permanent and all that stuff. And how do you make decisions? You know, because she was just as frustrated with, you know, the staff of the homeless program she's in she's in an unusual not unusual but she's in a strange as you know position because she heads a department that's not in charge of homelessness but has homeless programs and has to look across her bow at you know barbie and then now tina and say you know like how can i help her improve her system and how can i get better at uh integrating 
but doesn't have any power to do that because the CAO and the board hasn't really said we need a health and human services department, which I've been promoting for a long time. And long ago, I said to her, you know, I want to get Chris Kersey and the board to create a health and human services department. And what do you think about you being the head of it? Um, and at that time, she was just getting her feet under her and she said, no way do I want to be the, um, and I said, no, that's too bad because I think you'd make a good one. Um, so she kind of went back to just being, just being the head of human services, which is, you know, huge in of itself, but has been looking across her bow at how well Dave and Tina and all of us have been doing this COC, um, so when I told her that we're trying, you and I and Tanya are trying to improve their performance, she was very excited about it. And I said, mm -hmm. well, you could do, you could help us by introducing your programs to the COC. I mean, figure out a way of having it so that, you know, you aren't the sort of, oh yeah, you guys do some homeless too, you know, kind of thing. Um, because it is so health division or health department centered uh, that it sometimes, um becomes uh, incapable of doing anything. So anyway, so the three things I want to say to Lynn are, I want her to know the history of how we got to where we are. Um, I, I don't know how much I, I hope I don't spend the meeting saying, here's what I did in Sonoma or in Marin, but I want to, but I want to be able to say, look, you control and and so does the health department a hell of a lot of contracts with nonprofits. And this big one called ARPA is the first time that we've really had a lot of flexibility. Uh, and there uh, and there are lots of ambitions, equity, EDD, and uh, uh, human services all collaborated at the at the instance or instigation of a review committee that I was on to try to break some rules in order to be able to really really get the money down to a community. Uh, and I know she's proud of that. And I know, you know, because she supervised, not closely, but Oscar used to say that, you know, she knew what he was up to. And he, she knew what the, even though she never showed up at any of the meetings, um, she was very, um, took what we were doing to heart and wanted to make it successful. And I know that, I, I hope that she chose Lynn because she's as good as Oscar, meaning that she really, has some bold vision about how to, you know, break some of the traditional rules um, about how. So, to ha have you looked at Lynn's profile from I, I did. Dr. Costa and wherever else? Yeah. yeah, I did, and I the first thing that <laughs> occurred to me was that she was kind of in the same position I was in Marin over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So, so what the the backstory on Angela is the same as Lynn's. So she was at Marin. And then she went to Solano and then she came to Sonoma. Oh, and then Lynn, Lynn, if you look at like her more recent stuff, the level of reports that she's done and the type of reporting that she did, there there was like a, a special Contra Costa Board of Supervisors meeting, uh, which um, contain it basically it was their annual report for one one report was about their legislative agenda and the other report was about the status of their various programs mm -hmm. she's like she's a very good pick for sonoma in terms of somebody who has the breadth of experience of having written all of this stuff up and knowing all the programs already mm -hmm. um she's fit than oscar oscar was uh, yeah. so it's it's going to be intriguing to see what she's able to do um and then also i'll talk to you a little bit about hsd in a second but okay. um yeah so meeting with her like bringing her up to speed you know you would hope she's doing that with a lot of people yeah well that's that was sort of my now that she's been here at least one week i mean we were going to meet mm -hmm. last monday and so which she said was her first real day on the job kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know what this week's been for her because she had to, I, I was surprised she wasn't at the conversations meeting where her staff was, you know, meeting with all the awardees because I would have, if I had been her, I would have been there at least listening to what we were all saying. So mm -hmm. then, so the last part of the text that I wrote to you, which is part of what I want to make sure she understands was that, I came away from that meeting with a couple of, um, uh, you know, understandings, I guess. 
Um, one was the, the staff has firmly got what we wrote. <laughs> they understand that these guys aren't spending money fast enough. Right. So, and, and the staff now being, who are the specific well, the, staff? The, well, the key people that were at the meeting were Kelly and Jake and, uh, you know, a couple of other people who had, had less roles, but it was mostly a Kelly game with, mm -hmm. Jake, with Jake being the uh, fiscal guy, or at least the guy who asked uh, the harder questions about, you know, when, when I asked the question about, um, see, first of all, let me make sure you understand what I'm saying to her. $39 million went out in total contracts for the whole period from July 22 until uh, December 23. So for that 18 months, they took of the 39 million, they took 25 million and put it into contracts. Okay, so 14 million of the $39 is still sitting out there in 2024. And, and it's what everybody wants to get to, which is the second contract. The first contract was only 25 million. And it was that 25 million that our report looking at the quarter ending March 31st uh, said, oh my God, you've only spent 4 million of the 25 million. 21 million is still sitting out there to be spent before December of this year. And that's what freaked everybody and should freak everybody out. And that's what, um, and, and so the people who were at that meeting this week who were charged with why aren't you going to get to 25 million? We're worried that the other 14 was going to be denied them, um, that they were not going to get the second contract if they hadn't met the, the you know, the expectations of the first contract. And that's what um, Kelly and uh, um, Jake said. Uh, you know, they didn't say it hard last, like, if you don't make it, we're absolutely not going to give you the money. But they said, we're taking a hard look at whether or not you're going to be capable of fulfilling your obligations. And the board is the reason that we're doing it in August. They didn't say because, you know, Jerry and Gregory said it was going to be a disaster. They said the board is concerned it needs to allocate, reallocate the money in time to have new programs get off the ground, which means we're serious about trying to decide whether or not you should go forward. Um, and that nobody shocked, nobody was shocked, but I have a feeling there were a lot of people going, okay, we're really going to. And then yesterday, uh, um, Jake sent out an a, a email to everybody who was an awardee saying the same thing, saying, basically, we're taking a hard look at your expenditures. And we want to know right now, you know, he gave everybody, I think, a week to tell him and them uh, how you're going to get to the full expenditure, what your outcomes will be. I mean, it was a sort of um, a, as tough a uh, are you going to perform letter as I've seen now. Well, that's good. They need to hear that. Yeah. And, and Kelly was playing the good cop while he is to his bad cop saying, now we're really not trying to stop you from doing a good job. We just want to help you and find the barriers and do whatever we can. You know, she was saying what I was saying long ago about, you know, maybe there's some real problems that we've given you, or maybe you just need help or we need capacity building, you know, all, all, all the small agencies because the formula that we said long ago was, we don't want to just give it to the big competent agencies who can spend it really well because they know how to hide things or they know how to bullshit you guys. We want to do it. We want small agencies who've never gotten much money, who are closer to the community to have a chance at this money. And the bottom line is who got money was a combination of both. There are some really small agencies who've never gotten any money before, and there's some big ones that have plenty of experience with it. And we said, in effect, the big ones ought to help the small ones. And that mm -hmm. also came through in the message that Kelly was saying was, if you guys need help getting together, we need to work with you to do that. Now, that's that's sort of my third part, because in addition to having them be real clear about um, that we need to spend it and we need to talk to them about it. They set us all up in little break rooms. You know, half of the meeting was one-on-one -on -one break rooms with the, and, and first of all, only about half of the agencies who got awards showed up. And that's curious to me. And I'm going to try and. That's really them. curious. Yeah. 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 And big who, who, well, who is missing? Well, Metro Chamber of Commerce, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. CAP, uh, there was, you know, uh, SAY. I mean, there was there were some people missing that I thought would be there trying to. And if you saw that list that I sent in the yeah, email, I'm looking at that. Yeah, there's 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 some you know familiar characters on there that I don't think I I wouldn't have thought would have been 
either frightened of showing up at a meeting and say, and having to say, well, yeah, we haven't spent the money too. Um, so I want to find out from Lynn is, you know, how many of those who didn't show up, didn't show up because they've already convinced you that they're fine. You know, I, I called a few people and tried to find out, you know, how well they're spending their money. And one of which was uh, Cynthia Kane over at um, CAP. And her, her immediate reaction was, what? You mean we haven't spent money? Let me look into it. She didn't even know that they were so far behind. But and I said, and then she wrote back and said, I can't get to it today, but I'll get to it within a week. Well, she hasn't come back to me at all. It's been three weeks. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not sure about even some friends, but I want to try and find out either through Lynn to find out, you know, how's it going, you know, with these others that I'm identifying. Because if she if she says, Yes, Gregory, those who are big, who haven't spent a lot of money. Uh, we have talked to and some of which weren't in the meeting because we already are assured that they're going to spend the money and here's how. Then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll feel less anxious about, you know, how much money they're going to um, maybe have to. Hold on, hold on. Hold on just a second. Hold on. Howdy. Hi. How'd you sleep? Wow. Great. Are you back? I'm back. Again. Yep. Yep. Here. Yeah. So I, Amy had to say goodbye. So <laughs> as I'm leaving today uh, for, for a week or so, and then for three weeks after that, Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Be sure to so anyway, so so the it, it it's from my perspective ridiculous that that CAP or SAY or Metro would be allowed to not be there. Just yeah. on this list that you just gave me, that you yeah. know, CAP has unspent two point eight million yep. and they're yep. not bothering to show up to a meeting and they don't know that they're not spending the money. Oh um, no, that's she, she, that's she disappointing. Absolutely. I absolutely know that she knows she's not spending the money and she's panicking, but I don't want her. That's the other part is it. In addition, let me finish the money part of it. Which mm -hmm. is, right. Okay. So, so of the 25 million of the 39 of the first contract, uh, you know, you and I showed that basically they've spent four and I expect that the quarter that is April through June and the and the two more quarters, it's, you know, the second part of 23, they'll get to maybe without any real problem, half of the 25 being spent. They'll get to 13 million, 14 million. The other seven or eight is going to easily come in just because, you know, the agencies I know that are spending it are going to spend what they need to spend. It's the remaining 13 that's on that email that I'm worried about. And then you add the 14 that's coming in the second contract. So there's there's still a chunk of money out there that could be reallocated or um, uh, or readjusted to the current ones. So there's two decisions that the board has to make. One is, ha is any agency not going to do all of what they're going to do both this year and next year? And so their entire amount remaining uh, is open to be either sent, uh, reallocated to someone within the 27 or another RFP put out and some others who didn't get money uh, either either without an RFP, just simply saying you were 28th and we're going to give you the money. But somehow by October, and that's the other part of the, the meeting yesterday, or uh, day before yesterday, they said, we're trying to get the board to move the October, uh, August meeting to October. Um, and I think that's because they think they're comfortable enough saying to the board that we got most of the contracts uh, to spend all their money. And those few that we don't will have enough time and energy and, and, you know, sort of diplomacy to be able to get them to give up their money. And we'll either have recommendations to reallocate it 
in time to have new contracts for next year by October. So they would, the staff would rather have one meeting in October that both acknowledges the problem, gives them a little more time to solve it and gets the contracts in place for the next year, all in one meeting in October, um, which is fine if they, if they really make progress. If they're sitting in October and still arguing with agencies about whether they're gonna actually you know, perform and agencies like mine, you know, would say, hey, and, you know, it's just an arbitrary decision by the board to set it up as ending on December 2024. The federal government would let us have two more years. Why don't you? You know, right, they, yeah. they, they might be having all those arguments. And I want them to I want them to flesh out the arguments before we get to August, not and not just simply say, let's wait till October. Um, but the third part that isn't in the memo that I sent to you is I was shocked by how little each agency knew about what each other was doing. We had we had little breakout rooms and hardly anybody knew anything about saves. Uh, and I realized I didn't know that much, even though I have this great spreadsheet that, you know, tells us what they were supposed to do two years ago when we made the decisions that m the details of what they're really doing needs to be known to each other. And so what I want to do is ask Lynn to put together something that the community and the agencies themselves and all other agencies can read that really tells them what these programs are going to do and how they can play with them. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the uh, programs is uh, one I was interested in for SAVES clients. It's the junior college construction program. Right. Uh, getting people into trades. And, you know, I figured, hey, employment's a big thing for homeless. And in their application, they said that their target group was homeless, formerly homeless, they said, and uh, students at the JC. Well, they've got, you know, two million bucks they're going to be spending. And when I talked to Wendy Garcia, who's the adult uh, uh, education director at the college, um, she said, oh, yeah, we're uh, we're going to get homeless from Catholic Charities. Uh, and I said, well, from anybody else? And, and she said, no, no, Catholic Charities has all the homeless and knows how to get them into our program. And I and I thought to myself, this is a very uh, cleverly um, uh, manipulated uh, Jenny Lynn uh, saying to the JC, I've got some people who are coming through my system and I can put them into your program and you know, we'll, we'll. It's most no. I I don't put it. On, I could put it on Jenny Lynn, but I don't know the details. What I really put it on is how lazy the college is being. Okay. You know, they, you know. So it's and that's where um, you know, the North Bay Labor Council. You, you know, Jack should should also be paying attention to that. Is um, they're just being lazy. You know, we can find everybody that we need from there, but um, calling out that and not, you know, Catholic charity does or does not know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, but there's all, the, as you, we both know, there's lots of other entities that would be happy to put people into their pipeline. Sure. And, and so that's an illustrate. You'll be pleased to know that the North Bay Labor Council is one of the other three uh, front doors to the JC program. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, so, but in any case, it's a good example of nobody else in that meeting knew anything about what the JC was doing. You know, so it was- And sort of, that's Kelly and Oscar's fault. Exactly. And so I'm going to ask Lynn to make a special effort. We'll help her out. I want to try and, you know, because I said to the people in my little break rooms, every time I talked about, you know, saves, I was, I said, I'll put together something about what it is we're doing. And you put together something you're doing and we'll trade and we'll just, we'll, we'll set up a kind of, even if the bosses don't set up a, a resource guide for ARPA programs, we'll do it by sharing with each other. Um, well, I would have an alternative to that, which is with the, whatever reports Jake gets from the agencies <laughs> next week yeah. should should be pu published, which yeah. they won't be. But yeah. the other the other like the diplomatic reframe of that is to say to Lynn Peralta, mm -hmm. as the new person, you get to write this up and you you're going to get the detailed reports. Yep. Um, ask that, that that your staff in writing you the reports, because it's the same work they're going to do anyway, mm -hmm. prepare it in such a way that that it can be publicly shared yep. Um, yep. as a status update. Yep. Yep. And it, it, that's easy to do. Yeah. And yep. it's, it okay. helps her. And she's got to learn all that, too. Yep. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, let's put that on our agenda to make sure that we do that so that we get her 
on board with being open and transparent and doing it in a way that, you know, really positions her because it, it yeah. will benefit her to be seen as yeah. the person who helps uh, open up uh, a, a dialogue between the community and ARPA. Um, everybody else is going to applaud that. And her staff is just going to say, oh, God, more work. But you're right. They need to learn how to write reports that aren't so insular and, and so uh, protective that they can't be shared. Um, yeah, so and see, that's and it, and it's it's you know it's the fallback position of the the staff is too busy. The fact of the matter is, Gregory, the staff doesn't even have it in their mind that they have a responsibility and an obligation to be transparent on a consistent basis. They yeah. just do not have it. Uh, yeah. And I, like, if I ever talk to Lynn, I'll tell her that too. Which is um, the the HSD, the department people, they're all like extremely siloed in their own programs. Yeah, yeah. Extremely. Yeah, I know. Well, that's, I, I'm glad you bring that up because I do want you, I was actually thinking of inviting you to the meeting on Monday, but I think she probably just wants to meet with me. No, no, no I can do what after you, I come back. You, when, when are you leaving? You said something about August, August 17th. Or... Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's 12th now. Uh -huh. um, so a, after the, you... You get to carry it on after that point. Mm -hmm. we'll, be yeah. back in, we'll be back in late September. Um, and it, so that August 15th, I'm going to miss if they have it. Uh, and, and it will be in, I think, August, because you're right. Next week, they're all going to get whatever it is that we're going to be sending people. And by the way, let me take a step aside and tell you about saves. Mm -hmm. we're, we're rest. I'm not on the board anymore, so... Um, I'm, this is all not quite secondhand because they keep asking me to come to board meetings, but I don't get a vote on it anymore. But they know that I probably would not vote for going into the Corby project if we were to do it today. Um, the performance of uh, St. Vincent and the cellar and uh, all of the sort of machinations of uh, the question of have we taken on more than we can do and has Jack taken on more than he can do uh, are right in our face. Um, we will probably, if I had to guess right now, we would back out of the Corby project um, in, a, in a week, if not uh, two weeks, uh, which is awful because we asked the county, J uh, Dave, for $200,000 to be able to help seal the deal. And he went out of his way to try to find it in uh, Measure O. If you remember, he got two more million. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That 200,000 that's going to saves is basically a kind of closing the gap between what the seller wants and what uh, the St. Vincent was willing to come up with from their own money to buy the land. Um, we're disguising it in uh, um, improvements to the land. And even that is a little iffy about whether ARPA money could be used for that. So that's why he went over and found Measure O money. But I don't want to have Dave trying to find two. And so the board approved the 200,000, you know, two weeks ago. He's supposed to be getting it to us right now. Uh, and I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to have him successfully get us money for a project that doesn't go forward. Um and it's because the, it's because Jack is not ready or the land is not going to be ready to use or no, no. A combination of uh, the board of St. Vincent isn't as excited about taking the property into low income housing after we leave, like Horizon is pledged to be done. Right, yeah. OK, so they kind of said, well, we will think about doing another project that's like we're doing at uh, Horizon. Uh, the property itself is also causing problems because the difficulty of getting water, sewer, uh, you know, improvements, PG&E is more than we thought. The city is, the city is, Jack thought he could get the city to waive the uh, impact fees and they're not. So that's another, oh, no, yeah. they're another $100,000. Uh, it's just sort of slowly unraveling. Um, plus, you know, we're still having trouble, you know, keeping Horizon from blowing up. Uh, we have ex-staff and ex-employees, uh, I mean, ex-residents uh, suing us so and or making noises over and so our attention span. And, and stealing your shit. Yeah, yeah. And so our attention is is not as clearly we've got time and energy now. It, there's only four people left on the board. Tomas Phillips, who's a landowner and a really good guy who understands development pretty easily. 
uh, you know, he's already backed out and said, let's go find our own project and forget about um, Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Adrian and uh, Patrick Laughlin, are, uh, oh, and Arlie um, Haig, who's kind of a minor player, but really has been doing a lot of stuff for what she can do. She's half going blind and is sort of, you know, the, 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 the nice um, liberal on our board is saying, no, no, we should go forward. We should do it. But Adrian and Patrick, the other two, uh, are torn. Patrick really wants to do a project and Adrian doesn't want to not do it well and is worried about not doing it well. Well, what about the, the, the other the one you talked about last week that has the not the not the commons but the other one on santa rosa avenue where he could buy that yeah. other yeah. motel the, with the that, space that, in the back and that threw a monkey wrench into it and has has several of them going gee you're right gregory that would be even easier but see yeah. is that going to screw jack where's jack in yes all this? oh he definitely would and that's why I'd, i don't want to screw st vincent i want them to know as early as possible that we're backing out I, I told the board I wouldn't be surprised if they backed out. They're, yeah, I, yeah, I think I think graciously together, yeah. telling the the seller and the county and the city, you guys fucked us up. Yeah. Here we here we have the major players who have proven their ability to move forward. See the commons, mm -hmm. uh, and and you're screwing, and, and the city is screwing right. you over. Blame it on this, you know, get yeah, the city I'm, and the yeah. seller, and, and then. Then make I, an excuse to the county. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would put it on the city as much as I would put it on the naivete of Jack. Understand, not understanding. No, but no. Yeah, I understand. But Jack's, you know, this is Jack's big deal. This it was, you know, from the first day as executive director, he mm. wanted to do this kind of a of a housing long term housing solution. Yeah, well, uh, and it, so it's 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 dear, near and dear to him. Yeah, but here's the other difficulty about blaming anybody. Our solution to Horizon has to do with our putting most of the Horizon people over in the gold coin. Exactly, exactly. And, and so you don't want to hurt Jack. Exactly. I don't, yeah. I'm don't. i about to try and say, hey, Jack, I'm sorry, I'm going to blame you for missing. No, it. no, no, no. That's why I say, the you know, blame it on the yeah. the like the opening line of the Benioff <laughs> study is we need more housing. Mm -hmm. So blame it on the system, and the and the and this is a classic yeah. example of how the system is not really designed to help these basically small businesses called nonprofits yeah. Yeah. Um, su succeed. Yeah, and but, that's but the big but the big businesses won't get into these because well, that, they know you know that they cost so much money. And that's why the guide to resources, which I want to talk about in a minute. Um, so they so if we back out that's you know 1.7 million bucks it's not going anywhere you know it needs to either be reallocated or or repurposed in some way within well that's that hotel that that's why that you know the opportunity to buy a hotel and and and, and, and the and land the, okay so i'm glad you're bringing me back to redwood because redwood was applied dave in the county applied under the home key to buy that turn the front part into TLC and the back part over to somebody, which he says is probably us uh, and is a whole lot easier to do, but it's not going to probably happen within the lifespan of the first contract of ARPA. You know, so it's sort of like what we have to do is say to the county, we're not going to do Corby, but we have a really good chance of doing Redwood Inn and the Redwood Inn isn't going to take as long and will probably get open, but it opens the door that we have to ask, which is, can we go past December 20, 31st, 2024? Yeah. Yeah. And if we can do that, then the Redwood Inn looks like a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's our that's our saving grace for having done that. Okay, so okay, so yeah, so back to the ARPA and that October August thing. I'm not happy that they would extend it to October, yeah. um, uh, because I think putting the you know the pressure on in August moves them ahead three months. Putting okay. a putting putting a time limited project off mm -hmm. to the at the board of supervisors doesn't make sense to me yeah yeah i don't want them to be th uh, facing a do we have to extend it past december 30 uh, 2024 do we have to tell some agencies they have to stop do we ha it's like a whole lot of work if it and that's why if in august it looks like it's not a whole lot of work 
that everybody's got it together and that they've already maybe half decided to extend some of the programs past that point, then, you know, it, it, I won't worry about them extending it into October if we've got it under hand. Yeah, know. exactly. Exactly. And that's the done. thing is like so it's moving really things along and getting the sense of the board that the, what they're willing to do in August is yeah. a lot better than waiting till October to find out that, you know, David Rabbit thinks it's a stupid idea or whatever. Exactly. And that and that's why having Lynn openly early embrace the uh, we're all in it together instead of trying to be defensive is really important. So it just helps her come up to speed but if she as a new executive especially in you know like second tier down yeah. she's not going to make noise yeah. she's yeah. just learning she's yeah. she's yeah. going to give herself six months to come up to speed that's why um, we have to that's why we also have to keep angela and uh alegria i mean the other thing is i don't know how alegria relates to uh lynn I mean, the two of them seem like they're cut out of the same cloth. And I, ha though. Alan so do you said, know that Pam Notolowski, the, the other assistant director? Yeah. See? She's not the, the issue. No, see, this is the thing is that the the fact that nobody talks to anybody and that nobody and all of these second tier people will only go through the director yeah. and, and, a, and a director, whether it be Tina or or Angela or whomever, um, it spends all their time chasing the money in Sacramento. Um, <laughs> they don't, you know, there has to be an, a coordinated, integrated communication plan that yeah. they have to be talking. They need to really be, well, we're back know, and not just with the slick, yeah, you and, know, and pseudo we're, reports. And, and we're and we're back to my why didn't they set up a health and human services department when I told them too long ago? Yeah, yeah. Because here's here's health. But see, the, the, yeah, but the it's more recent past. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the more recent past is that Barbie was all gung ho on that, and uh, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, but Trey, Diane, uh, uh, like the the previous director at HSD totally put the kibosh on that because yeah. it, it's a totally unwieldy sure. department putting yeah. health and human services into the same department in this county yeah. is would not work because of the history of this county and the, and the side the the, the 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 width of the silo walls you, the noise you're going to hear is my wife saying i'm going to grind the coffee okay well enjoy your coffee tell her tell her it's hers. it's hers i'm not a coffee drinker yeah so i i'm just saying between you and i mm -hmm. as we try to move uh the coalition of employment uh no um, what is it ethan hawks um ethan brown yeah Ethan brown's thing and alegria and lynn those three are you know have been arpa forward uh I just want us to recognize that, you know, Dave and Tina are playing a big role in this thing, uh, not in the not in the main uh, route, but funding some of the same programs to do some of the same things. And we have to try and use the COC, uh, at least the homeless elements or the. So are you talking to Ethan people. at all? No. Uh -uh. I would, that's the other, you know, I think you and I, you know, strategically, not explicitly with them, but <laughs> making multiple contacts with the same people with similar concerns yeah, yeah. causes them to think there's a groundswell. Yeah. And, and it's <laughs> you're right. And if we're trying to make it so that someday they all join hands in a, you know, yeah. HHS thing, we've got to bring them all individually yeah. as we're doing. Yeah. It. Yeah. And that's the thing is like calling. And, and this is where both possibly with Corsi, but more so with Christina Rivera mm -hmm. um, the, and the, and the, this whole concept of the, the safety net programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we can tell all of them, the safety net programs, the access, the, the whatever they called it, um, that has the chance of maturity. And it, it 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 evolved just prior to COVID, and it re they functioned really you know fairly well during COVID, even though they were all in parallel boxes. Um, what do we how can we build that? How do we take the the access projects and uh, and uh, and make them in an integrated housing thing because we have all of this home key money we've done all these good things recently, mm -hmm. and so we need to talk about that, but we also need to see the actual 
the data, the, yeah. the uh, you know, particularly like the, um, the, the rental assistance program and all that kind of stuff. You know, you think the, the grand jury report on overnight shell, the winter warmth stuff is a big deal. Um, th th if anybody ever looked uh, the ERAP rental thing that they did where they gave out all that money, yeah. that was a complete shit show waste of money. Yeah. They, but yeah. which saved a lot of people's housing, ironically sure. enough. Sure. sure. Well, we yeah, can so. we can accidentally do well too. You know, it's like sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes we just can't figure out a way of blowing it that badly uh, when there's lots of money. Yeah, and so, but what, like what you're doing, and I really appreciate that, is is your attention to the ARPA stuff and the detail. I mm -hmm. think we are getting movement based on what you're saying and what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, we are getting movement, and, and it's, yeah, it's thirty nine million dollars. We should. Uh, be, it's it, it reminds me of HEPA of the fourteen million yes. when, when he yeah. when he came out. It's yeah. very similar. And, and that, so and what do we what have we learned from that? You know? Yeah, and that's why I'm really proud and happy that we're carrying that name forward. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, the other piece of that though is the uh -huh. um the absolute dysfunction of the coc board um uh, they had that strategic yes. planning meeting last week and apparently i didn't listen to the first 40 minutes but they spent all of this time talking about the rosenberg's rules of order i know it's like all of these years later they're still doing that and the fact that that tom bieri gets to set the strategic planning agenda and yeah. quash Ludmilla's input I and then, then so when you get to the board there's yeah. no time yeah I felt so sorry for her and I almost I mean I, I have a semi-conflict of interest partly because I helped uh start CSN and I have this mm -hmm. so there's a there's a part of my heart that doesn't want to dampen Tom's uh brilliance and sometimes uh success <clears throat> but he is so provincial in his perception mm -hmm. of what a strategic plan is, to, you know, supposed to do, serve his interests. I mean, it's like, okay. And, the, and she, he's pushing her off to say, no, we can't make any changes for the next five years of this plan. That's total, totally wrong. Well, it's he, just a, a wrong interpretation of how change happens. Well, and he's also falling back into, I just don't want anybody to interrupt my my procession into taking over this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, I, I hate to think that a director of CSN would be um, uh, opposed to consumer input because that's where it was born. Mm -hmm. uh, but Tom's acting not a whole lot less uh, anti-consumer than Jenny Lynn. You're, oh yeah, so you caught that, and that's true, and uh, yeah. um, and that's his 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 framing, and this is all confidential because it's like back back room stuff with Ludmilla. His framing with Ludmilla is that sh that there's some kind of a battle or a fight about the strategic plan, and he doesn't, you know, he he wants her to 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 stop talking uh, because it doesn't fit the strategic plan and well, it's like not only if he's the director of a mental health organization that can't accommodate somebody with the kind of anxiety and process that Ludmilla has <laughs> it's like that says a lot yeah but about Thomas, how poor, poorly he do, he's doing things yeah, but Tom is and, not a mental health therapist he's an administrator but and, he but he runs a fucking I know he that runs a program exclusively for mental health, and that's what's tearing my heart out about his actions. It's like then, then, then save you, then agency. save your creation. I mean, then, <laughs> then turn your creation back to what you want it to be. Well, we could have the same conversation about IFSN if you right, want to have right, that too. Right, sure, yeah. but okay, but here's here's how I'm doing that. I have some expertise and a long. Uh, credibility around strategic planning so mm -hmm. I, I can bend tom and the rest of them back to the goal of strategic planning which is to serve the interests of future you know allocation right. yeah. mm -hmm. and and in an open and, and objective and fair process which is not what tom is trying to do he's trying to make it very self-centered very much of a narrow uh, little input, no long range. And he's not even on the board. I know he's, a, he's 
And yeah. so, you know, I have my things with all the board members too, and you're better at it than I am because I'm less diplomatic. Uh, but, but I think the balance is, is conscious, you know, yeah. that, you know, the pushing at causes movement uh, and just the, you know, the, well, but the rest the of the board and the commitment also. Uh, but remember is, that, in my in opinion, the rest of the board is co. Uh, what is it they call it when you're uh, codependent? Codependent. <laughs> they're codependent because they're so dependent on consu on provider input, and he's perceived as you know the head of a provider agency. That's yeah, incredible, yeah, and that's fine. So they and give which him is, too much which is credibility. Credible. Well, they give him too much credibility, too much influence into the process of what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, all of those provider agencies, I can argue, are are uh, better experts at determining the need uh, to pitch to a decision making process, but they have no credibility in process of how to make decisions uh, on a countywide basis. There's nothing within a nonprofit that sort of says there are a good decision-making process for all county needs. That's why you have a COC. And so right. the idea but, is- But then you have the, but then you have the staff dominance of that. So yeah, hopefully, right. may, maybe Dave Kiff can overcome that uh, as he as he's changes things around, but I'm not seeing it at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah. that, so in terms of like making Lynn into an ally, um, helping her to understand this dynamics and 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 bring with her whatever yeah. skills she's bringing from the other county experiences, yeah. um, that'll be helpful. So I appreciate you doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so so that's why I want to try and the third part of the memo we talked about mm -hmm. um, what Dave and I are working on in a narrative. Uh, the narrative is to try to bring not only the Angelas and the Lynn's and everybody else into the world of housing for homeless because you know mm -hmm. though, though human services has programs for homeless it's not necessarily uh expert uh, housing aspects of it uh and i just want people and who... now you're completely gone again no really can you hear me yeah yeah so why don't you um so that I'm, I'm almost simply a you're like I, housing. my internet why is my internet connection unstable what's tended to happen is um like this part of a meeting i'll be on a meeting for you know uh, 45 minutes or something mm -hmm. uh, at about this time suddenly i get an unstable connection really? you know it's not early on it's just so anyway so i missed that a little bit of what you were just saying as we were going to start talking about the resource guide oh the re so the resource guide to me is a primer for dummies it's like housing for the homeless for dummies because we've made it really complex by creating nine different levels of getting off the street you know right. from shelters becoming non-congregate to permanent housing evolving out of permanent supportive housing evolving out of hotels evolving out of so i'm what dave and i are trying to do is first of all create a directory that names everything that actually shows where everything that we have in the county fits and that's why i was asking him uh, yesterday and the day before to look at what i had and tell me you know, which of those hotels you're buying are really permanent now, as opposed to transitional yesterday, you know, and he was going, good question, Gregory, I don't know, you know, some of these are still sort of halfway between transitional and permanent, some are going to be permanent supportive, and some are going to be permanent, and I said, well, you're the one who's going to have to at least tell me where to put them, what I want to do, I'm, I'm remembering when we used to have a Rolodex at Kairos, um, and the value of the Rolodex at Kairos when I was running it in the 78 was um, we had people who actually told us where we were wrong in the Rolodex, came mm -hmm. back, you know, gave us feedback. We changed the Rolodex. Well, we have an online system now that has a whole lot of websites for different programs, none of which relate to each other or tell anybody the kind of story that I'm trying to portray in the guidebook, which is you know, we're committed to a, uh, a series of transitional housing um, facilities that sometimes look like housing and sometimes don't and basically carry people from insecurity to security. And we all need to know 
not only who they are and where they are and how to get into them so that our clients have an easy way of getting in and out of them. And that was supposed to be with coordinated entry and no barriers and all that other stuff, but it really comes down to who knows who. So why don't we tell everybody who knows who, tell everybody how to get into all of them and what they're doing and how well they're doing it in a guide, but also have them so that it can be updated automatically every time somebody who's a new case manager you know, changes the process and to get in. And what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is actually two distinct things that are, that are linked. Okay. Uh, if I may, um, sure. the first is the core purpose and the core attributes of 211. Yes. Um, the the yes. COC is putting $200,000 yeah. into yes. 211. So, yes. so that, so that, what you're developing as well as what the, what 211 is developing uh, is is central uh, and and essential as to particularly as to the automatic updates and things yeah. and then the guidebook is directly related to the the communication plan that the COC staff has outlined Yes. Uh, if when you look at what they have in that communication plan, they're going to put each of these things up on their web page. And so what I would hope is that, that the web page can be organized in such a way that it, it does what you're describing, which is what is the system like and what are the transitions, transition points within the system that makes yeah. it understandable to a junior in high school that's our target audience yep. uh and then um uh so it's really keep that distinction one is the individual agencies and their input process and that's a 211 function because mm -hmm. that's quote automatically updated uh mm -hmm. and it has to be done logically and appropriately and by somebody who's going to be there and i'm not mm -hmm. going to be there and you're not yeah, going to yeah. be there yeah, so yeah. but then the, but then the guidebook and again, especially flowcharts mm -hmm. of each sub program and the criteria that links one to the next through links yeah. or, you know, all those things that can be done on the website. Um, that's the, the, the sort of the guide or, or the yeah. cookbook yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Sure. Uh, but that's that's on the COC's website. That's good, where it belongs. Good, good al analogy with cookbook. Yeah. It, 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 and another way to put it is, the the two one one is much more of a user friendly and user mechanism, and the um, uh, the second part is much more of a decision maker process, or at least a longer term or a final right. Yeah, and 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 also especially a orientation process yes. for new staff and new yeah. board members into a system. If they can, yeah. on their convenience, look up, oh, what the hell is transitional? They can look at the COC homeless services website and say, right. oh, yeah. this is the definition of transitional. Right. And this is how long it lasts. And then mm -hmm. here's mm -hmm. what I can tell my clients. So yeah. it's a training tool, but it's, it's, we so often conflate those two things. And yeah. then um, like when we make that summary list of what the available resources are, mm -hmm. um, we don't build in the mechanism for maintaining it. Yeah, 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 definitely. Absolutely. Okay, well, you got what I was trying to make. I, and I'm particularly interested in the the latter parts of, I guess, eight, seven, eight, and nine, because though we've been re really spending a lot of our time and money and energy around shelters and transition and interim, you know, the idea of going from permanent supportive to permanent or from shelter to permanent, you know, using either section eights or browbeating the people who are building new units downtown or whatever, we need to get people into real permanent housing. And, and we talk a big game of doing that, but nobody puts any energy into it. When I'm running around trying to find, you know, what is Hugh Fattrell doing with downtown you right. know, 888, you know, it's like, okay, uh, you know, does anybody in the COC give a shit about whether or and not that, anybody does yeah. that? And that's where Michelle needs to come in. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if she's taken over, see, that you're, you're taking good advantage of the opportunity we have with Lynn and Dave and Michelle to sort of let's make this actually a sensible system. Yeah. Um, I made a funny joke and I don't know what what I'm going to do with it. But um, uh, with, with Ludmilla yesterday is like what I said was it takes a lot of people to put up a circus tent. 
<laughs> and so we're putting up a circus tent with three rings in the middle. <laughs> right, right. And so, so and sort of using that analogy, you can't, you can't put up a circus tent by yourself. No, you need, yeah. you need elephants and shit yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. um, and so I, like I, I do think I helping do think them to, to, to define the tent basically. Yeah. And I do think even the CAO, you know, the, there, there are members of the board, that whole budget hearing process was interesting because they were talking about, you know, trying to redesign government in, in a way that, um, that that's pretty adventurous. And I know they're doing it only because they've got some extra money and they're trying to figure out what to do with it. But they're also looking at a new way of building decentralized government, you know, those little uh, you know, one-stop shops out in the various communities that Linda and Susan have been trying to get and that, you know, you acknowledge that Petaluma is already sort of, you know, mm -hmm. head and shoulders ahead of everybody is, is really all about not only how do we bring community or government to the community, but how do we do it in a way that's integrated so that people aren't just as scattered at the local level as we are at the central county level? Yeah. And it gets really confusing and helping them, you know, helping them to, to organize it in a way that that carries it forward and, and acknowledges the the information dynamics of what we're currently doing mm -hmm. um, is uh but it, it's such a shit show. And then the, 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 the COC staff internal focus on themselves yeah. Oh, is, yeah. a, is, is a key barrier. And Dave is uh, and, struggling with the, how do I, how do I deal with the woe is me attitude with my staff? You talk about it and you say, this is your job people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this, if you can't do this, let's find somebody else. Daniel is a waste of space and time and energy. Yeah. Michael is a waste of space and time and an active impediment because of his status. He yeah. stops all this stuff. So actually putting it out there that this is where we're going. You either get on board or you get off the boat. You go someplace else. We don't mind if you want to leave. Thank you for your service. But yeah. th if, if they're wanting to, quote, reinvent government, it's it's Dave and Tina have to help people do that. And they have to be transparent. Yeah. They yeah. have to make transparency. The And they're not. Uh, so I, I requested, um, and you could give me some advice on this. So I that, that behavioral health bridge housing proposal. It's oh, a big yeah. Yeah. multi-million dollar the Arrowwood thing. Yeah. So I made the public records request at request. I got a note back yesterday where the county is saying they have to consult with the state about whether they're permitted to release a proposal while it's pending before the state. <laughs> That's interesting. It's uh, like it's totally. It's just no, no, total, no, it's, it's like yeah, no. It, 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 they've, if they've moved to a to an RFP, even with the state or an MOU with the state or any other contract with the state, it 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 escapes. It is no longer capturable in private session. All of what we you know and I know comes mm -hmm. in closed session. And simply because the closed session had to identify the seller within the process, that's how I learned about, you know, Arrowwood. Prop. And no, and I'm not asking about which property. I'm just asking for their response to the state's RFP to, to say okay. what their it, plan is. Yeah, but and they don't even want to say what their plan is. Sure, but it's true. OK, but I mean, collaborative governmental to government contracts uh, are only um, what I'm hearing you say is that somebody is saying they're only um, disclosable upon completion, and that seems like it's a complete uh, abandonment of a local process to develop the proposal in the first place. Exactly, and, and they it, they refuse to let me do that. I I made requests I during the process, what... and they just they they never responded. They literally yeah. ignored it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can make the same thing for the entire housing elements of all the cities. You know, it's like the housing element is a contract between the state and the locals. And until it's approved, all hell breaks loose if it isn't. But if it is, there is a overwhelming uh, public input process into the housing elements development long before it's ever approved. And there's no difference between a housing element contract with the state of California and a local and a a bridge 
um, health, mental health contract with state mental health and local mental health. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's like it's really fundamental both on terms of program it's design how they and service delivery, yeah. and and they think they know everything. You know, and that that's how, what got me off on the track is the, when staff thinks that they're the be all and end all, um, then the public and us particularly, you know, wise advocates uh, don't have the opportunity to help them. Yeah, well, that's my it's, sole it's purpose. Also, it's also lawyers in the county council's office who've never had an, a, a, a trial issue that has a judge say, no, sorry, that's public record. You know, <laughs> As, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's only a few that really uh, have paved the way. And every time it's usually the local lawyers saying no and the finally the judge is saying yes, and then they go, well, I guess we have to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I, so that, that'll get us off to Alegria at some point, but. Oh, um, definitely. Yeah, but yeah. you're right about, we need to, I need to spend some time with Ethan. I need to figure out how he plays in this process. The reason I think I need to go a little, uh, at least an entree to him is, I don't know how to deal with Metro Chamber of Commerce, but I know that I have to go, uh, partly through um, the RAISA in the city. Um, you know, there is an economic development component of the city and who's supposed to be dealing with businesses. And she's a really neat lady. And I think I should use her as a kind of, how do I get Peter Rumble to think about trying to, you know, play in ARPA in any other way than he normally does, which is close to the chest. Uh, what I want to do is build, I want some of that 6 million bucks that he's got that he hasn't spent and he probably- And I think rice, rice is good and, and the EDB is good. Both of those are yeah. are, are viable. Uh, they're, different thoughts, players, you know? they're different players than I usually play with because they're not engaged in housing. They're not engaged in direct services to clients, but businesses, small businesses with, you know, BIPOC folks who are- yeah, uh, in Roseland seems pretty close, you know, and and seems like they should be as uh, as activist as uh, as we can pull Peter into being. And uh, see if you can get EDB to train those BIPOC players yep. in general, yep. not in specific, but spe especially in general. That's the vehicle he has, mm -hmm. and that's the the the. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he's he hasn't been in that role for very long, yeah. so there there's a way to 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 pull that together. But well, okay, I, so I I think he's he has time a he has a self interest because they got an advance of three hundred thousand dollars on their six million bucks, um, and as far as I see I've seen so far, uh, they haven't spent you know more than one hundred and twenty thousand on actual real life you know development of. Well, products. is he able to give you his application packet? No, and I, yeah, I haven't even asked for it. I How mean, fucking stupid is that? I mean, I know, I know, Pete, like Teresa and some other people that I, you know, associated with uh, Arlene Francis Center. That they can't figure out how to even access that money because nobody <laughs> will give them what they need. So, That's so the uh, and back to your your guide thing with each of those, like the I'm looking at number nine, but mm -hmm. eight, nine, seven, yeah, eight, yeah. nine. You should have comma yeah. after each one. Who's the sponsor? Yep. Comma. Yeah. When was it established? Yeah, yeah. So because yeah. you know the studios at Montero got established oh, yeah. no, no, no. last it week, a, and the Palms Inn totally, got established when I it did. I totally agree. I, 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 there's a whole series of not a whole series, but there are some um, required elements behind every one of those names that I need to do that are exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Who's the sponsor? How many units? What do they get for it? You know, what are the, what's the total? What cost? are their rental rates? That, their rental that's rates? the, All that the frust yeah, 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 the, the, the frustration. The property yeah. Who's the property manager? I mean, all this stuff. On the income, the the acceptance criteria. Um, I can't believe, uh, let me brag for a second here. Um, so my son, Patrick, it's my middle son, mm -hmm. um, went from being a, a, a culinary guy at high-end restaurants. He left to to work at the lodge at Gallagher's place and he did that for five and a half years as the bartender in the front the house front of the house manager and various things and then he became the activity director mm -hmm. but last year when Gallagher and company screwed to him he switched to cots so now he's a case manager at cots <laughs> so, so he but he he's applied like all of his senior housing 
stuff to his cots role and he's really good at it okay. but um he um you know he's rattling off which of all of these housing things would take somebody who's on ssi who has a 960 dollar a month and and that's really critical oh, yeah? so so in each of these identifying which ones and how many low income uh, you know mm -hmm. super poor very low income people could live there yeah. Because that's that's the that's the conclusion you know, it, of the UCSF Benioff study too. Their right. very first conclusion is housing people we can af can afford. Well, you um, know, and I, I was gonna I, here's here's a geo mapping uh, solution that I had once about two years ago. Um, we were trying. I was trying to figure out how I do a better map of the city of Santa Rosa as to whose apartments are. Uh, more right. friendly toward uh, low-income individuals. And since you can't get, since Section 8 is attached to the individual, see, when Gallagher first got in trouble, it was sort of like, how could we have figured out that they aren't taking people? Well, if nobody who ever lived in that apartment complex ever got SSI or ever got Section 8 or ever got, because we can, we can, we know the address of the people who, get some of the public benefits. And if we can tie an address from benefits to an address uh, that got a um, uh, entitlement through the city, you know, mm -hmm. somebody, if somebody got a development and was telling the city, I will serve low income people. And right. then in the history of that apartment complex, never had any government program identify that it went to that address it's a pretty good in illustration of somebody who's blowing it, who's, you know, failing to, um, you know, fulfill right, that. Or not following through. And that's exactly. a, that, that becomes a Michelle yeah. Whitman problem. She and could it, keep that, she could keep it, that so, database. So you, so you can make a map that had red meaning I got an obligation, blue meaning I feel I'm, uh, fulfilling that obligation and every apartment complex that only has a red sticker is in trouble. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I, so that, so I, I would go green, yeah. yellow, red, yeah, blue. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, blue being there's something shady here. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's like you and I love playing data games that have power. And those are the kinds of data games that say, okay, here's the deal, you know? But, but well, the other thing, Gregory, though, is we're, what I'm trying to do is get somebody else to do it so I can stop paying attention. I, it's, it, <laughs> as, it, if, it, as if you it, didn't know that already. <laughs> and, and, I, and I wanna, I wanna actually, I wanna share with you, I was trying to figure out who I should nominate for the merit awards of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, the criterion for the merit awards, our friend Karen Weeks is in charge of it, is that it had to be a volunteer and they had to have done something good for the city, right? So I was, for the longest time, I've been trying to get the city planning and economic development, the guys who, you know, certify and approve all these buildings and stuff uh, that are going up, who, had, who five years ago, when I was showing them my maps and saying, you should have a map that's on the city website that shows the pending developments that you're carrying through the city. So we know where they are being built and what they're being built and tied it all together. Claire Etienne, I mean, or Claire um, uh, Hartman at the time and her staff said, that's a great idea, Gregory. We really like it, but we're not ready to do it. So now if you go to the website of the city, they've got, five or six maps that are really like, you know, great illustrations of where their current planning development is. And so I was going to nominate the planning department of the city for a merit award. Oh, they, there you go. Yeah. Because they, they followed through on a suggestion from at least one citizen and really made it as easy as possible for us to follow the, the things. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it's like, because it's when people are paying attention, when they when the the city the staff whomever has to be ready with that information already sitting there yeah that's that's my thing about transparency too it's like you i shouldn't have to do a public records request i should be yeah. able to just see it you know yeah. and and the halfway point was about 2 years ago when they were producing these things in spreadsheets and passing it around on desks 
to various staff members so they can look at, oh, this one's gotten to this point. Yeah, we should do that. You know, when I was going, right. you're almost there. You just need to. And that that actually goes to my dot thing. You could do yeah. green, yellow, red and blue could be yep. in development. Yep. And then the, the actual the percentage of the dot. So mm -hmm. if it's 50 percent there, you get a half a blue dot. Yeah. Versus versus 95 or then 100 percent, it gets to become a green dot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. So the, one, and then all of the technology will allow us to do that. Yeah. And so one more laugh. Uh, last week, I was comparing Gen H's uh, map based system that they have on their website, which is my map from my ma <laughs> Google Maps um, with the city's maps so that we I, I would see does Gen H support all the things that are going through the city and are there things going through the city that don't happen to pay Gen H enough money to put onto their map <laughs> it was really interesting mm -hmm. turned out that ver mostly all the ones that Gen H are, uh, have on their map are on the cities but the city's map is actually better it actually shows a whole lot more of the kind of detail you and I want which is mm -hmm. what percentage are they really going after uh, and how far along are they in the internal city thing? Gen H doesn't doesn't even show how far along they are or when they're going to have their next hearing. But it's important for the city planners to know when the next hearing is so they can have their act together. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And that's and, and and that's really is a more of a staff function than a Gen H function. Yeah, Why yeah. should we pay for the same map to be developed twice when the yeah. people with the primary information yeah. could so they, share they, it? As you know, they're motivated by two different things. Gen oh, H yeah. is motivated by how much <laughs> money they can get to pay their own staff. And the city is motivated by, can we get these things done so we can get some you know, approval from our city council? And see, that goes back to the Peter Rumble thing too, because he's on the Gen H board. And yeah. when the strategic Sonoma thing happened years ago um he, the whole housing component of that he took that on and then he wouldn't talk about what they were doing but in fact what they were doing was basically consulting with the healthcare systems and like getting the big money to support what he was doing mm -hmm. and then that silicon valley bank thing they're taking credit for that which is legitimate um but yeah so they so it's all it's all linked together and sort of helping them to tie it together and then questioning them about where they go next. And again, that's Ethan's pretty good. I've worked with him over the years. So I think getting integrated in that, you know, the, uh, do you know Katie Greaves at the human services? I do from a long time ago. I yeah. would, I, if we could pull Katie in on any of this stuff, okay. that would be good. a huge investment. She's around for another 10 years or so. Okay. And she's a bright, She's a bright bulb. I really, you know, I've always had a lot of respect for her. Okay. Well, help me in that regard. We'll try to figure out a way. We've got to, at, at some point, we need to have both HEPA board meetings, you know, produce sort of collaborative meetings with other folks and not just. Yeah. Has yeah. A, and ask and asking questions. them to, to answer our questions. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you say you're going to be gone September. August through so August, we'll, uh, it's September 27th or so yeah so I think we'll overlap all d d uh, like the 19th but the 20th yeah. or whatever uh, yeah. and then I'll be I'm not leaving in August that I know I probably <laughs> will leave in September for another 10 days but um, okay. and then you're going to be gone from August through the end of September right. where are you guys going this time we're going to start over in uh, Germany in the Berlin Museum, because every time I go early on when I used to go to ruins, everybody would say, well, the good stuff's been stolen by the early German you know, explorers, and it's in the museum in Germany. So I'm going to spend about three days in Berlin, and then we're going to go over to Czechoslovakia and go from uh, you know, from Czechoslovakia to like Romania, all the way down to the Black Sea um, on two different tours that have two or three countries each. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Good. So it, it, for your notes and for my personal edification, while you're in Germany, if you see anything on like shamanic stuff or ancient spirituality, okay. that's that's something I'm very much interested in. Okay. Basically yeah. trying to trying to figure out what my ancestors believed. <laughs> OK, well, I, <laughs> I've often thought that Germany was sort of the last place I would ever visit simply because I'm not interested in what most tourists go there for, which is let's look at the disaster of Hitler or let's, you know, figure mm. out something. And uh, it, either that or the other kinds of trips that people took were down the Rhine boat trips. 
Um, yeah. There's a, but there's a black forest up there and there's a whole lot of other things that really, you know, that the, the transit between Norway and uh, the steppes uh, early on in the history of the world, um, you know, Mesopotamia to Northern Norway uh, and over to America, that fascinates me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm Norwegian, French, and English, and so I've sort of my my ancestors were on the periphery of the, you know, the deep dark, uh, you know, history of Eastern Europe, which mm -hmm. which had more to do with how the Western parts of Europe ever came out. It was just it took three or four hundred years between the time that the folks who were in the deep parts of Europe to make it out to the Celts and, you know, into the, the edges of the world where the um, folks and ships uh, raided. Um, but long before that, there were hunter gatherers that were doing a whole lot of uh, interesting civilizations. Um, when we were in Turkey and when we were in the, you know, the various stands, it just seemed to me that uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of history. Most people don't even know that don't have any clue as to how the earliest what people most think of as Mesopotamia and the you know Persian areas how that whole thing after Alexander ever made it into uh, Western Europe is uh, oh cool yeah so for, for your Audible book or your whatever the two books if you haven't read them and it'd be worth reading while you're on your trip is the Graeber books G R A E B E R one mm -hmm. is called Debt D E bt okay. and and the other is called the history of everything <laughs> it's literally the history of everything except uh -huh. for money except for money uh -huh. and the and the and the debt book is literally more about debt than it is money uh -huh. so those two i would highly recommend especially for the trip that you're doing because okay. it real because they t it talks a lot about the evolution of those areas and and the the, the uh, particularly the overlap of why different cultures develop differently. Ah, okay. And, and sometimes it was just because the other people on the on the other side of the hill were different than them, so they were trying to be distinct. <laughs> those, mountain, those mountains do a whole lot of uh, yeah. Separation. So you'd you'd enjoy those too, and it, it really it'll help you. It'll put all of that in perspective. Kind well, of thank stuff. you. I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, okay. it's Graber. All right, David Graber. Graber. We'll do. All right. Okay. All right. I think okay. we're good. We'll just catch up like in that week, July 20th to August, whatever you're leaving. Yeah. Yeah, let's have another meeting that week and and sort of get new assignments. Or and something. I'll, and I'll, I'll be eager to tell you what happens at 830 on Monday at 930 in the homeless action meeting. Sounds good. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be there this Monday, obviously. Oh, you won't. OK, no, well, no, because I'm going to be I'm gone. Okay, so I'm well. going on vacation, you know, to Tahoe next week, and wow. then I'm going back to my summer camp on July 5th. So. Okay, well, I'll I'll send you an email. All right, thanks. thanks. Well, Gregory, have a great day. Thank you. You Good too. Talk to you soon. All right, bye. Bye.